Mario and Nancy LaFaro, Americans who were on that ship. Boy, they're on with us live now from Rome. Uh, Mario and Nancy, thank you so much for talking with us. We've heard many stories about what happened and what was the scene as people realized that there was a disaster. What can you tell us about where you were and what you experienced uh, when um, the ship started to list? Sure. Um, we had finished dinner and we went to see a show in the theater. And the theater is situated in the front of the ship. And about 15, 20 minutes into the show, um, we heard a very um, unusual uh, vibrate. Uh, we felt a vibration and heard a grinding kind of noise. Um, and the show stopped immediately. And, and ironically, it was a magic show. And um, the performers just literally ran off the stage and there was silence and um, the lights flickered a few times and then the lights came on remained on and we noticed that there were people in the audience that started to leave the theater uh, we decided to do the same thing um, and we eventually found our way up to the top deck so that we can get you know um, an eyeball of what was going on and we were shocked when we looked over the uh, starboard right side of the ship we were extremely close to um, an island, um, and um, we started to feel the boat start to list to the starboard side. Um, and it wasn't for at least, uh, in our opinion, 30 minutes or so that there finally was an announcement on the public address system in various languages and in English. They said that there, everything was under control that there had been an electrical problem um, and a problem with the generator, and that everything was under control. And my husband and I looked at each other, and we said to each other, they're full of it. That's, right, that's right. So, right. yeah. We said, we got to get to our life jackets. Yeah, and that took 30 minutes for them to so, even make an announcement that everything was fine. Then take us from there, how long before you realized it, uh, it's not fine, and how long before they started some coordinated attempt uh, to get you off the ship and, and to uh, inform the passengers that there was a, a, a serious situation. I'm not sure that I ever heard any announcements about anything being serious until um, we found our way to our cabin. We um, got our life jackets. We grabbed um, our, um, uh, our coats. Our coats and our knapsacks and we went over to the muster station. We asked, are we supposed to muster? What are we supposed to do? And the crew um, uh, tried very hard, but they kept on telling us they had no information. And it wasn't until, in our opinion, about almost an hour into this ordeal, where finally there was the um, whistle blow, I guess the, it's- The signal for evacuation. The signal for evacuation, yeah. seven whistles or whatever it yeah. was. We got on the lifeboat, and we started to be lowered, but my husband indicated that he thought there would be a problem because of the listing. They had waited such a long time. The boat was listing, was problematic in terms of deployment. And we, uh, at one point, we were being lowered, and we went uh, sliding off to one side. Everybody fell onto one side of the life uh, boat, and then we went slamming into the ship. This happened a few times over about 30 seconds, and then finally we were lowered to uh, the water level. And from there, um, it took a while. Even though we're so close, I think the photographs and video show what proximity, close proximity we were to shore. It took about 30 minutes for us to get to shore. The lifeboats were hitting into each other. Um, it was just chaos. chaos. I think that we were very lucky. I think the only real trauma um, that we felt where we were in serious danger was that 30 seconds where the boat, the lifeboat we were on was banging into the and, ship and, and dropped. And free fall. Free, free fall, fell. that kind of thing. Other than that, we got off safely. Um, and um, I think that what disturbed us most was when we met other people and they were telling us that they couldn't get off the boat for several hours, that they boarded a lifeboat, then they were told to get off the lifeboat. Because there was a problem they with the deployment of the lifeboat at that point. Um, we just feel that if we were evacuated sooner, it would have been a lot more systematic, a lot easier. And, you know, there wouldn't have been as much chaos and 
maybe less injuries. In talking with other people who we heard were on the ship up until almost, you know, midnight, um, where they were uh, being taken off the ship finally when the ship was at an 80 degree angle and people were sliding and they had to climb things and step in water and do all sorts of things. We feel very fortunate um, and, and we look at those photographs in that video and we're just totally blown away that something like that can happen. Um, they weren't, they shouldn't have been that close to the land as far as we're concerned. Um, and the, uh, the fact that they didn't make any announcements for a while, that they didn't deploy earlier, that there was absolutely, no in our opinion, no at communication, all. Uh, lack of training. Um, the, the, the crew struggled. The they crew tried, but they didn't did seem to know well what to do. They could.